morning. Welcome to Standish Congregational Church on this more traditionally winter morning. It's starting to look a lot and feel a lot more like uh, the winter that we're used to. Um, it's, I find it beautiful, especially when the snow clings to the trees like it is this morning. It's just, it can be breathtaking. And uh, maybe I have a little more positive attitude this morning because I, I thought about naming my sermon this morning 38 to 7, but I thought <laughs> that might go over some people's heads. Um, but, but welcome and thank you for being here this morning. Uh, if you're visiting, please join us for refreshments in the fellowship hall after the service. And um, we are an open and affirming church. So whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Please join Brian Marles, our reader in the call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength my life, of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me, he shall set me high on a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, will I see. Do, do not, not hide, hide your face from me. Do, do not, not turn your servant away in anger. You, you have been Lord, my help. Do, do not, not forsake, forsake me, O God, God of my salvation. Please join in the hymn of praise, Arise, Your Light Has Come, number 167. I did not pick that because of those lyrics. Once again, welcome. Uh, it's lovely to have you all here today. Um, it's feeling a little bit tipping this way, but I'll take it. Um, I was really gratified to see so many of you at the annual meeting last night. Thank you for participating in that. It's important work, and uh, it was really uh, well done, well received, and thank you to everyone who submitted reports and um, and contributed to that meeting. Um, anyone who served on a board or committee this past year, you have my thanks. And if you're continuing to serve or newly serving this year, uh, thank you and you're all blessings to the entire congregation. Um, a couple of quick announcements from me and then I'll ask if there's anyone that has anything to add. Um, I will be having office hours on Tuesdays from one to four here in the, in the pastor's study and on Thursdays by appointment. So if you 
you need to see me, um, or other, other, other times by appointment as well, um, but I'm planning on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we will be having an Ash Wednesday service on February 22nd, uh, when Lent begins, uh, preceded by a tr traditional uh, pancake supper. So um, look for details on that, the announcement sheet. Um, and I want to thank uh, this morning, uh, Katie Marl's not here. Um, we have some guest musicians, of course, Diane Black on the organ, uh, Michelle Ratcliffe uh, playing cello and piano. And we're also going to have a musical contribution from Zad later on in the service. So thank you so much for, for that. <laughs> any, uh, any other announcements? Uh, we tend to be a visual group, so I have some visuals. I hope you recognize what it is. That's half of it. It's the other half. So to me, this represents football. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can read my shirt for. And so we have the one half that are here, you know, for the football game. And then the other half, largely women, I think, <laughs> are here for the food and for the commercials. And the commercial previews have already started on TV. So we have a big thrill for that. So this is all about our chili fish chowder cornbread event coming up that the Caring Connection is sponsoring. And we're doing this as a fundraiser because our ministry is to do acts of kindness to people. That's part of it. The other part of it is because we've been through three years of the pandemic, we've all been isolated and we haven't been with each other. So we are also having as part of our ministry that we are reconnecting with everybody as we have done starting this past year. One of the reconnecting things that we're doing is the Chili Chowder is raising money so that we can sponsor two concerts coming up after church. They're going to be musical con um, concerts and um, they'll also have coffee cake with them before that. And um, we need to fund those things so that we can share them together. So this is all about the chili chowder. And um, we wanted to remind you, if you wanted to volunteer, to sign up to make some chili and chowder so I don't have to cook that night. If you're like me, I'm there for food already made and the, and the commercials. And the men seem to like fish chowder and cornbread and chili, so you can sign up to do that. And then in two weeks, we're gonna be taking orders for it. And we have published an ad in the shopping, gra uh, shopping guide. And also you'll see posters that are around the town, in the town hall or in the Hannaford's. And Hannaford's has been very good. They're gonna contribute the carrying boxes for us for when we deliver all this wonderful food. So all of you, um, we hope you're all interested in helping. So it'll be a sign up in the fellowship hall. Thank you for the support of the Karen Connection. Next, okay. So I am doing the members and friends directory and I have a lot on here, but I am looking for people to edit it for me before I print it off and give it to everybody. So if you would check this out in the fellowship hall, Whoops. <laughs> um, no problem. Um, yeah, just check off your name and see if there's anything accurate or inaccurate that you'd like to fix, and then I can print it off and bring it in next week. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll take a moment for the COVID task force. I um, just wanted to thank Greg for sending out a, a fantastic recap of where we are, it's been three years into the pandemic and we still are providing some guidance. Um, at this point, just to hit on a couple of the things that, that Greg had written about, 
We're not really recommending any kind of specific limitations at this point. Things change. Um, but we are aware that there are people with different health concerns. These things can change too. Uh, so we, we are seriously recommending people wear masks if they choose to. Uh, and seriously consider whether attending our services in person makes sense for you any given Sunday. Uh, we've invested a lot in our sound system, our Zoom meetings. We're going to continue to uh, have those available for people uh, each and every Sunday. So if it's a situation where you're not feeling well, by all means, take advantage of the Zoom services. If you're just feeling like you're worried about it, take advantage of the Zoom services. It's a fantastic way to be able to still engage in the church and you know, protect yourselves and, and feel safe. That's all that we can ask. We will continue to meet. We will likely continue to give guidance based on the best information that we have. Uh, again, we appreciate your patience. We know that it can be challenging, but the, uh, the guidance and, and the situations do change. So we appreciate, we appreciate all, all your patience and your prayers. Thank you. Anything else before we continue on? Merlene? Brian didn't see my arm up here waving away. It almost fell off, Brian. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what I wanted to say, when they talked about sign-up sheets, I have one out there, too. It's on the snack table. Would like them in a baggie and we will serve them up. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Then let us uh, turn our hearts more intentionally to worship. I will uh, offer an opening prayer, which then please uh, join me in the prayer of confession together. And after a silent prayer, I'll, continue, I'll conclude with words of affirmation. O oh God, you are our light and salvation. Still we fear there is so much that remains unknown and uncertain. We push against you, but you will not push us away. You hold us close. When we wonder what the day might bring, you whisper, follow me, I will make you readers to little children, bandagers of bruised hearts, lovers of the forsaken, pilgrims who show the way to others. We ask so much of you, O oh God. We want your beauty and comfort. We need your strength and peace. You hear our cries and answer us with your endless grace and love. You are our joy. If we come to God with open hearts and honest words, we will not be pushed away, but wrapped in God's loving and forgiving embrace. So let us join together in confessing our lives to God. Holy One, we have so many questions but we don't pause to listen to your still small voice, to your invitation to follow, to your call to serve, to your affirmation of our gifts. Instead, we push forward. We do what needs to be done without aim or direction, responding to our attention. We cross it off the list and move on to the next. Forgive us. Forgive, Forgive us, us for our patient and our self importance Call us again to seek your face and follow the Christ. We are listening now. Children of God, God is listening. God has heard your prayer and wishes you peace. God forgives you and loves you. This is the good news. Amen.
Thank you, Zad, Michelle, and Diane. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for that offering. And now I'd like to invite Mary Lou Tracy forward to have a moment for all ages. Good morning, Sierra, Josie, Kai, Ari, Sawyer, Amelia, and Zan. What a great job you did. So, so a lot of times I talk about metaphors and how stories in the Bible are metaphorical. And sometimes that's tricky to understand. And I want to, I mean, we already had an example of a metaphor with Zad's song. What, what, did, what were you saying? Numerous strings. Uh, I got so focused on this that I just forgot. Okay. <laughs> Numer numerous strings in the loom. In the lute. In the lute. And, and you're asking to be one of them, so you are part of the beautiful song that you were. Um, during the season of Epiphany, we often talk about light. And I think a couple weeks ago, I brought in a bunch of flashlights, and we thought about how handy they are when the power goes out. Well, in the Bible, um, the prophet Isaiah talked about um, a light in the darkness. This was a time when the Hebrews were under somebody else's control and the days were dark, metaphorically, even though the sun came up. But God promised some, that light would come. And who do you think that was? It was Jesus. And Jesus is the light of the world. And we had a couple examples. Um, today already, but I wanted to think about something symbolic that happens every week, and it's mentioned in the bulletin, bringing in the light of Christ, and Sierra did that today, and what do you think that stands for? You're bringing light into the church, yeah, and when the candles are lit, um, in Sunday school sometimes we say we light the candle to remind us that God is always with us because that lit candle is an example of light. And here is the best part, I think, right at the end of the service, taking the light of Christ into the world. And that is our job, to be light in the world. When you go home, you can um, think about being light. I know it's a metaphor, but being light is being helpful at home, being kind to friends. Uh, learning about God in Sunday school and church. So we'll think about the metaphor of light all day long today. 
So let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for being light in our world. Help us to be light too. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Amen. Our hymn for all ages is On Eagle's Wings. No, wait, it's um, <laughs> In Christ There Is No East or West, number 381. I'm going to be providing quite a bit of context for this brief passage during my message, but it may already be familiar to you, especially so soon after Christmas. Um, and as you hear Brian read it, please also be thinking of the words from our call to worship this morning, which come from a companion psalm that dovetails nicely with Isaiah's words. Please listen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Here ends today's scripture. Please join me in prayer. May the meditation of our hearts and the thoughts of all of our minds be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This part of the church year, the lectionary has us bouncing around a lot in Isaiah. Not surprising as much of the Old Testament prophecy concerning the coming Messiah is found in Isaiah's writing. In fact, the book of Isaiah is one of the most frequently quoted sections of scripture by New Testament writers and was often quoted by Jesus himself. In this same chapter of Isaiah, just a few verses after the passage that Brian read, is the familiar 
for unto us a child is born, and the list of names, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So Isaiah is a book rich with meaning for us who seek to know Jesus. But since prophecy is a dish best served with context, let's take a look at what was going on in Isaiah's day, the Cliff Notes version. Isaiah brought prophetic words to four kings of Judah during the eighth century BC. The words in today's passage were addressed to King Ahaz. Now I'll remind you at this point that the original nation of Israel had been divided into two separate kingdoms. The region to the north retained the name Israel and the kingdom in the south, including Jerusalem, was Judah. Ahaz was king in Judah. And nearby enemy nations, including Israel, were conspiring to war against Judah. Isaiah advised King Ahaz to seek God's counsel and to ask God for a sign of confirmation that these rumors were true, to place his trust in the Lord. But Ahaz refused to do so and instead formed his own alliance with the powerful nation of Assyria. The Assyrian Empire controlled much of the region that is today Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and parts of southeastern Turkey. When King Ahaz consorted with Assyria, he fell into the same trap that so many other kings of Judah and Israel had done in the past. He incorporated Assyrian worship into the customs and lives of his people even removing holy furniture from the temple in Jerusalem and replacing it with a custom-built altar modeled after one that he had seen on a visit to the Assyrian city of Damascus. Isaiah naturally called him out on his idolatry and accurately predicted that it would result in his ruin and ultimately would contribute to the future destruction of Judah. It's in this context that Isaiah proclaims the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light and goes on to describe the rise of a new king, that whole unto us a child is born business. And the people hearing Isaiah's words at that time would surely have interpreted this to mean a great warrior king who would vanquish the imminent invaders and deliver them from oppression. A pattern of mistaken interpretation that would continue right down into Jesus's day. Now, we who have the benefit of retrospect, we know how this turned out. Assyria conquered Israel. Babylon took over Assyria. Babylon conquered Judah and carried them away to exile. But we also know something else about this prophecy of Isaiah's, again, because we can look back at what God has done. In most Bibles, the passage we read today has a heading, something like the government of the promised son or I think in our pew Bibles, I think it says the righteous reign of the coming king. Talk about spoilers. God has promised that his light would shine in the darkness. In God's pattern, he allows darkness, but only for a time. After a period of darkness, light will surely shine. It starts right on page one in the story of creation. The world was formless and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Then God said, let there be light. After humanity hit a low point of rebellion and debauchery in Noah's time, and darkness reigned in the souls of men, God instituted his promise that he would restore humanity. When the Hebrew people were enslaved in Egypt, God used Moses to deliver them to freedom, freedom to worship and serve God rather than Pharaoh. In the chapters leading up to today's passage, the prophet's warning of a coming darkness, a prophecy of coming judgment. But Isaiah goes on to say that the people who have been carried away into darkness have seen a great light. For God, darkness is never the end. It reminds me of the saying, all will be well in the end. And if it's not well, it's not the end. The psalmist knew this. The reading from the Psalms that goes along with this week's passage is from Psalm 27, with the heading, An Exuberant Declaration of Faith. Verse 1 proclaims, 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Bible often uses darkness to describe the condition of being separated from God. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians says, you were once darkness, but now, speaking to Christ followers, you are light in the Lord. Jesus identified himself with light. In John's gospel, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And again, John proclaims, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, note that in the examples I used earlier of God's promises, that darkness only prevails for a season. The creation, the flood, the delivery from Egypt, the light comes from God. God spoke light into the world. God sent the dove to Noah and placed his bow in the sky. God guided Moses and the Israelites by a pillar of fire. And God sent the light of the world to us to show that his promises are still being fulfilled. During this season of Epiphany, we welcome and celebrate the coming of the light into the world. When you hold Genesis chapter 1 side by side with the first chapter of John's Gospel, two parallel creation narratives, you might say, it's striking that in Genesis, the first thing that's brought into existence is light. But John tells us that the light was already there. All things were made through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. At this time of year, when the sun sets early and the nights are longer than we'd like, we crave light. I want to share with you a little life hack that I've been using for the last few years, last few winters. On the day of the winter solstice, I activate an alarm on phone that goes off every day at the time the sun sets on December 21st. This day, of course, is when daylight begins lasting longer. So this daily alarm at 4.03 this year reminds me that more light is coming. After just a few days, the light in the sky is noticeably brighter. And by this time, late January, it's really noticeable the difference between January 21st and December 21st. And it sounds silly, but this little reminder helps me get through the cold, dark days of winter. Jesus came bringing us light. The dawn of light comes with the repentance that Jesus preached. Sometimes the epiphany, the moment of realization or revelation that we have, is, what we, is that we've wronged someone, or that we've deceived ourselves, that we've neglected God. Sin is that little kernel of darkness that persists in our hearts, no matter how we try to get rid of it ourselves. Like a pebble in your shoe, it grates at us. We can choose to ignore it and let it continue to pain us with every step. Or we can make the conscious choice to address it, to stop walking and shine the light of God into the darkened recesses of our souls and shake the pebble away. Now we know that walking in this world, until God sets all things right, there will always be another pebble. But we have access to the light of life. If we decide to, we can avail ourselves of the power of God to forgive us, to remove the pebble, to walk in the light of life. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Jesus the light of the world. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Amen. Now we come to the time when we offer up the joys and concerns of our hearts in prayer to God. Does anyone have a prayer concern that they would like to share?
Well, I want to offer thanks again for the, the people that participate in the annual meeting. Um, it's a blessing to have such a great group of leaders and volunteers and helpers. So thank you all. That's a joy for me. Let us pray. Gracious God, you've called us by name and invited us to be your disciples. You've claimed us as your children, and we are grateful. We are grateful for the gift of this day, this beautiful planet where we live, work, worship, and play. Help us to preserve its beauty and the natural life it supports. We are grateful for the communities in which we live. Grant us willing hearts and hands to make them places of welcome, work, and opportunity. We're grateful for the people in our lives, our coworkers, neighbors, friends, and families, those near and far, those we see often, and those we can only see in our fondest memories. We call on you to be near to those whose lives, bodies, and spirits are broken. We call on you to give wisdom and prudence to our leaders that they may seek to do your will. We call on you to bring peace where conflict rages and comfort where despair looms large. Jesus, we have heard you when you call and we pray as you taught your disciples, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We heard last night about the 2023 budget for the Standish Congregational Church. It was prepared in prayer, and I ask you now to continue to pray about the stewardship of our financial resources and consider how you might continue that work in our community. So please listen as Diane plays the offertory.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. We are called to follow, yet are often slow to respond, God of grace. We are blessed with more than we ever need or can use, yet we are reluctant to part with even a portion of this abundance. As we offer our gifts to you, remind us that learning generosity is part of our call to follow the one who's modeled your gracious nature in every word, every gesture, every day. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is All My Hope on God is Founded, number 460. now, beloved, to follow the love of God, to be surprised by God's wonder, to lift your voice for love and compassion. Dare to believe you are people on a mission of healing and grace. Feel God's encouragement to be a blessing as you offer blessings with your heart and hands, and know that you never, ever